Warm welcome to today's talk. Stratcom Talks is here with another great guest today. Our guest is Assistant Professor Asaman Kutlu. Let me introduce her to you. She is an assistant professor at Baykent University. She graduated from Istanbul University in the English Language and Literature Department. She has a master's degree from the Radio and Television Department from the same university. Currently, she teaches at Baykent University in the Media and Communication Department. Dear Ms. Azaman, welcome to our program. It is good to have you on our show. We are going to talk about fact-checking today. Thank you very much. First of all, we started hearing these words often lately. What is fact-checking? Why is it so important? Let me get started with information ecosystem because it's going to be better to understand its change over time. Today, there is a great concern about how we fight the dissemination of mis- or disinformation, although there are new concepts indeed. First, let me talk about the distinctive component between two, and it is intent. This information refers to false information with an intent to harm, but misinformation addresses false information that may or may not be mean to mislead. Yes, go ahead, please. So, I'm going to use false information to refer both while talking. False information spreads so rapidly and widely through social media that it is posing a greater concern today. We witnessed the increase of false information we have never experienced before. So, what kind of concerns or I mean interests do we face? First of all, we live in a post truth era and now objective facts are getting less influential than personal opinions. And as much research showed us, dissemination of disinformation through social media, for instance by troll accounts, spread faster and more widely than facts. It is so true. So, this blurs the boundaries between what is fact or not. When we look at the studies on new media, especially the pioneering ones, we see researchers emphasize the impact of flow of information, freedom of speech, and participation on democracy. However, now, we are talking about a growing concern for that flow of information, and this information can be produced by anyone. It can be a tool for propaganda or psychological operations. So, it is really difficult to underestimate the role of false information today. It is hard to tell the difference. Right. Good point. Now your question. You ask me why fact-checking is important. Today, digital media is the most important source of news especially considering Generation Z and Y. We all know that. So, getting information, I mean correct information, and verifying online information are now much more significant. In conventional media, journalists and organizations are responsible for news accuracy and credibility, but now it is our, I mean, user's task to verify that credibility of information. Fact-checking services which verify online information have grown throughout the world. They are using different channels to fight false information. It must be hard to control false information. It is not only traditional or social media, but they are also fighting false information in closed networks like WhatsApp. Fact-checking is one of the effective tools against false information. There are also other tools, I mean web-based tools or browser extensions. For instance, some classify Twitter accounts as bot or human by checking features of a profile or some use language processing to identify false or factual stories. In fact, fact-checking is as old as journalism itself. The first examples were started by journalists in the USA. They started at the beginning of 2000s. But I have to address here two important elections. The one is the USA election in 2016 and the other is Brexit in the same year. These two are often considered to increase global awareness for disinformation and fact-checking. True. We know about it. But today, fact-checking services are not media-dominated as they were before. There are different groups and organizations. 
because it's not so possible to work out verifying problems with traditional media practices. Because we are in a new media environment and this new environment is speed driven. There are no editorial or institutional gatekeepers. It is more open to manipulation. So we need other solutions. For instance, social media companies at the beginning didn't take any action against disinformation published or shared on their own platforms. But now they are changing their policy to fight disinformation. And according to a recent report, the number of fact-checking sites are increasing all over the world. I really wonder if they can always find the correct information. I mean, fact-checking sites. There are more than 300 fact-checking organizations and they are in more than 100 countries. They are mostly independent, but some of them somehow associated with the governments. Also, those sites differ in their services. I mean, they are often divided into three main categories. Some focus on political statements, so their concern is on fact-checking of political actors mainly. The other category addresses online rumors, and the third one is more about specific topics such as conflicts or issues. So they can also be controlled. What does the research say about the use of fact-checking? Research on disinformation and fake news has expanded much in recent years. Uh, but the use of services or understanding of behaviors of users towards fact-checking is still limited. But we conducted a study on fact-checking and I'd like to share the results with you. We carried out the research in Istanbul with the members of uh, Generation Y. You know, the members of this generation are known to be engaged much in social media and we try to understand their attitude and behavior towards fact-checking. And not all the findings were as we expected. First, they mainly prefer social media and online information sources to consume news, I mean, uh, to get news, but they relied more on conventional news media. And most participants didn't have information about verification services. They were skeptical towards news in social media and they were exposed to fake news, mostly. Most participants said, for instance, they were able to spot fake news, so we try to understand what they do when they think they encounter false information. I understand. So what can be further threats? They mainly use search engines to verify information. If they want to share it online, most of them first verify information and later they share it. And another finding that wasn't expected, some participants said they shared fake news even if they were doubtful about its truth. Here I have to mention the results of another research. MIT scholars carried out a study and it showed that the spread of disinformation is not because of bots which disseminate fake news, but it is because of people retweeting or sharing false stories. And fake news are 70% more likely to be shared than factual stories. This is so amazing. How so? Here the problem is source credibility, I guess, and why we consume news or get information. You know, credibility is a hallmark of journalism. Previous studies in communication showed Source credibility is not always an important variable on the acceptance of a message. In the long term, people tend to accept this information. For instance, according to a similar study, it is easier for people to share this information if they received it previously. I mean, if this information went viral and they feel it is less unethical to share. That makes sense. Here, the problem is not that people may believe this information, but the problem is it is no longer important something is true or not. Echo chambers and filter bubbles are some of them. In fact, digital media enabled us to reach different opinions. But on the other hand, new media environment also made it easier for us to exercise selective exposure. So, 
People can follow information sources reinforcing their beliefs or political opinion. And in order to cling to their own beliefs, they may prefer to believe in news which contain disinformation. So they may ignore alternative sources or avoid different opinions. And this isolation from disagreeable information may lead to echo chambers and political polarization at the end. Also, they may avoid politics and have less political information. And this is a big threat to democracy as well, because democracies depend on informed citizens. What are the solutions? What can be done? Media literacy is often proposed as a solution to the problem, and it looks the most effective way to fight false information. We can broadly define media literacy as Developing critical thinking about information we receive and create. The movement of media literacy is not new either. It was started in the 1970s and its primary focus was on the protection of children from the harmful effects of media. But today, considering the changing role of audience from consumer to prosumer in a new media age, it's believed to empower people. I mean, it is very different from the idea of media literacy in the past. There is a big change, correct? To become a media literate, first we should integrate it into the school's curriculum and make it a central part of it. Because young people represent the future. So we should focus on teaching how to interpret information. Also, we should always be aware of the influence of media, power of media. As I mentioned before, online media is speed driven and we, I mean users, have shorter attention spans. So instead of just reading a headline, we should look beyond it. We should check the source of the publication and also the date of the publication. Do we only read or share content if it confirms our beliefs? We should also check our attitudes and behavior because we are both consumers and also producers of information online. Thank you very much for joining us today. We had a nice talk with Miss Azam and Kutlu. Our interview was great. Hope you had a good time too. I'm sure that everyone learned something from our talk today. Thanks a lot. Dear Stratcom family, it is end of our time. Stay well till we meet again next time. Have a wonderful day.